Main Volume Chapter 22, Defamation Section 6 Defenses Subsection, B, Absolute Privilege Subsection, 3, Official Communications Official Communications 22-99 Page 79 It is frequently the duty of public servants, both civil and military, to publish matter of a defamatory nature, especially in the confidential reports which in the ordinary course of affairs must be furnished to the heads of departments and other superior officers. The privilege attaching to such communications is absolute. It has been held that an official report on one of his subordinates, furnished by a general to his superiors, is privileged, though made maliciously and without reasonable and probable cause 477 and this on two grounds, 
one applying only to military and naval affairs, the other to the public service generally. It was said 478 that no one serving in Her Majesty's forces can, in respect of any matter of discipline or question affecting his military status, appeal to any other jurisdiction than that which is created by the military law to which he has voluntarily submitted himself. 479 It was also said to be a matter of public policy that officers of the army, just as ministers of the crown, should make their official communications without any possible fear of consequences before them, and that therefore their privilege is absolute. 480 On this latter principle it has been held that communication made by a Secretary of State to his parliamentary undersecretary in the course of his official duty cannot be made the subject of an action for libel. 481 The fact that a communication relates to commercial matters does not of itself preclude it from being one relating to state matters and therefore Absolutely privileged. 482 It has been doubted whether absolute privilege for communications between officers of state extends below communications on the ministerial level. 483 In Hasselblad, GB, LTDV Orbinson 484 The Court of Appeal held that communications with the European Commission relating to the enforcement of competition proceedings should be afforded absolute privilege. In Mahone v. Ron, No. 2, 485 The claimants sued the defendant bankers for a report which they had provided to the TSA in the course of their investigations into fraud. The defendants had also sent the report to the SFO which had initiated an unsuccessful prosecution against the claimants for fraud. After their acquittal the claimants sued the defendants but it was held that the report was covered by absolute privilege. 486. Communications between foreign officials. 22 to 100. It has been a matter of some dispute as to when, if at all, communications between officials of foreign governments should be afforded absolute rather than qualified privilege. In Hart v. Gumpake 487 where a government official in the service of a foreign country was sued for libel in reporting on the conduct of another official in the same service, it was held that his report was protected by a qualified privilege and that the question was, not whether the facts stated in the report were true or not, but whether the defendant might honestly have believed them to be so and to have reported them without malice in the discharge of his duty. In Salat Nastako v. Fink 488 the Court of Appeal expressed doubt as to whether an absolute privilege would extend to corresponding foreign documents between foreign officials, though it might apply on the grounds of public interest in the exceptional case of an allied government set up in this country during the war, and in Richards v. Nong 489 the Court of Appeal again considered it to be uncertain whether absolute privilege applied to the middle or lower ranks of the services, or to the secret service, or to the visiting forces of a friendly foreign power. In Fade v. Altagir 490 the Court of Appeal held that an interdepartmental memorandum, prepared by the defendant who was acting as ambassador at his country's London embassy, and criticizing the claimant, a national of that state, should be afforded absolute privilege. The public interest, arising from the comedy of nations, that the United Kingdom should not meddle in the affairs of a foreign sovereign required the English court to refrain from investigating such a document. The privilege thus afforded by the Court of Appeal derived not from the line of authority developed from Chatterton v. Secretary of State of India 491 protecting communications between high officers of state in the service of the Crown. 492 It was a consequence of separate and in of public policy related to international relations and page 80 based in part on the provisions in art point 24 of the vienna convention on diplomatic relations requiring inviolability of embassy documents point 493 hence communications between embassy officials of a subordinate rank might well be the subject of such privilege when equivalent officials in the United Kingdom would be of too lowly a status to attract such protection point 494 furthermore the judgment in Fate v. Altagir leaves uncertain the degree of privilege afforded to officers of a foreign power not serving as diplomats in an embassy in the United Kingdom. Communications between such officials, if they do not attract absolute privilege, will at least be protected by qualified privilege. 495. Statutory Absolute Privilege. 22 to 101. Okay. Okay, this is important.
Enggak pasti kalau kode. Or the Vienna Convention said. Let's take a look at this. Let's see. It has been a matter of some dispute <clears throat> as to when, if at all, communications between officials, the foreign government, and the foreign actor, rather than qualified to. The government is not to respond to the dispute that has been proposed by the United States and the United States. I qualified privilege and that question was not whether the past statement report was true or not, but whether the defendant might come and see the police them to be so. And they reported them without malice in the discharge of his duty. The Court of Appeal expressed doubt as to whether an absolute privilege would extend to corresponding for a document between foreign officials where it might apply on the grounds of public interest in the exceptional case of an allied government set up in this country during the war and in which the Court of Appeal again considered to be a decision whether absolute privilege applied to the middle or lower ranks of the civil. But the secret service was the resisting forces of a friendly foreign power. The Court of Appeal held that an interdepartment memorandum prepared by the defendant to his action of the combat that the country did not be able to fight in the same way. National values should be afforded out to the public interest to in the Committee of Nations that the United Kingdom should not meddle in the affairs of foreign sovereign required in this way to refrain from investigating such a document. Privilege that's afforded by the Court of Appeal derives not from the line of authority developed on the chapter in protecting communication between high officers of state and civil government. So the content represented on the ground of public policy and international relations and the impact on the provision of the 24 billion convention. Okay, so the Vienna Convention covers the requirement Requiring inviolability of embassy documents and communication between embassy officials is one might well be subject to such privilege when the official in the United Kingdom would be a too lowly a status to attract such protection. Freedom of the judgment leaves uncertainty to be a privilege of foreign power. That's the thing is that the in the United Kingdom communication between such officials that they do not attract absolute privilege will actually be protected by qualified privilege. Section 10, 5 of the The Parliamentary Com Commissioner Act 1967 gives absolute privilege to reports by the Commissioner to either House of Parliament, and to the publication of various matters to and by the Commissioner, his officers, and members of Parliament for the purposes of the Act. Section 32 of the Local Government Act 1974, gives absolute privilege to reports of the Commission for Local Administration and of the Local Commissioners and to the publication of various other matters for the purposes of that Act. The Courts and Legal Services Act 1990s.23, 5, provides that the reports of the Legal Services Ombudsman shall be absolutely privileged. Absolute privilege will also attach to any publicity given by the Legal Services Ombudsman under S.23, 9, to a person's failure to comply with the recommendation to publicize any failure to comply with the Ombudsman's regulations and the reasons for it, as required by S.23, 8. The Act also sets up the Lord Chancellor's Advisory Committee as a statutory body and provides that the publication of advice or reports by this committee in the exercise of its functions shall be absolutely privileged, SCH.1. Privilege against production. 
22 to 102. All writers of confidential official communications may be protected by a privilege of a different kind, which does not cover their liability, but makes it practically impossible to prove a case against them. These privileged documents as they are often called have in fact no connection with the subject of privilege as understood in the law of defamation. Their proper treatment is in the law of evidence. A passing reference may however be made to them here. The production of these documents may not be permitted in courts of justice when one of the
of the litigants satisfies the court that the public interest in withholding the documents outweighs the public interest in protecting the other litigants' right of redress before the courts. Point 496 This may be because state secrets may be thereby disclosed or because it is desirable that public servants should be able to write freely on matters affecting the public service without exposing themselves to the fear of actions. It is sufficient if the official who has the supreme control of the documents objects to their production on the ground of public interest 497 but even without such objection the court in fitting cases will act on its own responsibility point 498 although it will be rare for the courts to override a minister's objection the house of lords in conway v rimmer 499 held that the court has a residuary power after weighing the possible injury to the public interest against the injury to the interests of justice that their suppression would cause, to overrule the objection and to insist on production if necessary. Point 500 Full weight must however be given to the minister's view, and if the minister's reasons are of a character which judicial experience is not competent to weigh, the minister's view will generally prevail. Point 501 In Revy v Century Newspapers 502 R sought disclosure of a report which had formed the basis of an article in the defendant's newspaper alleging that his murdered brothers and he himself were IRA members. Disclosure was refused, the court holding that the freedom of the press. Page 81 under Art.10 to report such matters prevailed over R's right to respect for family life under Art.8. Under S.1 of the Freedom of Information Act 2000-0503 the public have right of access to information held by public authorities, subject to various exemptions. Under S.79 of the Act, information supplied by public authorities following requests under the Act will, if the information was originally supplied to the public authority by a third person, be covered by qualified privilege.504. Scope of Privilege Against Production 22 to 103 The scope of privilege against production is not limited to documents emanating from or in the possession of a Department of State. Any litigant can claim that the public interest would be damaged by the production of certain documents in his possession 505 and the courts no longer distinguish between what used to be called crown privilege claimed by a minister and public interest privilege claimed by other litigants. Point 506 The test to determine whether or not to uphold the claim to withhold documents will be the same whether advanced by a minister or any other person. For example, the NSPCC was permitted to withhold documents giving the names of their informants because of the risk that disclosure would prejudice the flow of information crucial to the welfare of children in danger. Point 507 Documents concerning dealings with foreign states may be withheld if Her Majesty's government makes out a case that there would be real damage to the public interest thereby. Point 508 A chief constable was allowed to refuse. Disclosure of an internal disciplinary report 509 but there is no absolute rule that such documents never be disclosed. In each case the court will balance the competing public interests, for example in R.V. Bromel, Coventry Newspapers Ltd., Re 510 the Court of Appeal held that it would be repugnant to justice to refuse discovery of police complaints authority documents where the claimants were police officers and the defendants sought discovery of the relevant complaints procedures to establish their defense. In each case, the court will balance the competing interests. Point 511 where the claim is not by a minister it has been suggested that the Attorney General should be consulted before the action. Point 512 public interest and production of documents. 22 to 104. The test to be applied in every case is, that documents otherwise relevant and liable to production must not be produced if the public interest requires that they should be withheld. 513 This test is applicable to both particular documents and those belonging to a class. The approved practice is stated by the House of Lords to be that when the objection to disclosure is made by a Department of State the objection to production should be taken by the minister who is the political head of the department concerned and that he should have seen and considered the contents of the documents and himself have formed the view that on grounds of public interest they ought not to be produced, either because of their actual contents or because of the class of documents for example, departmental minutes to which they belonged. Objection to production may however be made by the permanent secretary to a department when certain of the documents relate to the formulation of policy by a previous government. Such 
Documents are by constitutional practice not disclosed to successors in government. Point 514 The minister ought not to take the responsibility of claiming that production should be withheld except in cases where the public interest so demanded, for example where disclosure would be injurious to national defense or to good diplomatic relations, or where the practice of keeping a class of documents secret was necessary for the proper functioning of the public service. 22 to 105. Page 82. The principles governing privilege against production, whether claimed by a minister or any other litigant, were reviewed by the House of Lords in Burma Oil Co. Ltd v Bank of England 515 when the bank refused to disclose high-level policy and confidential documents relating to the bank's purchase of Burma Oil's BP stock. It was held that the party claiming discovery has to persuade the court, 1, that the documents contain material necessary for fairly disposing of the case, and on this ground Burma Oil failed in their claim, 516, and, 2, that there are strong grounds to doubt whether, in view of the importance of the issues in dispute and the individual interests at stake, the public interest really does demand non-disclosure. Where the objection is made in a ministerial certificate it is not essential to question the accuracy or good faith of the claim to immunity made in the certificate in order to raise such doubt. The court, when doubt is present, then attempts to balance the competing private and public interests 517 and may, if unable to conclude the matter otherwise, inspect the relevant documents. Point 518 however, in Air Canada v Secretary of State for Trade 519 the majority in the House of Lords said that the court should exercise the power to inspect only if satisfied that there were definite grounds to expect to find material of substantial importance to the litigant seeking disclosure. Disclosure can be ordered whether the objection is to the disclosure of the contents of a particular document or to the production of a class of document because of their sensitive nature. Courts will be slow to question a ministerial decision that revelation of the specific contents of a document could cause public harm and equally reluctant to order production of high-level policy documents central to the machinery of government. But there is no absolute rule that disclosure of such documents may never be ordered. Point 520. 477 Dawkins v. Lord Paulette, 1000.